In videos, we're going to talk about rotate parts of letter forms to create those. And we're going to do this in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to set up and I'm going to set it up for web. So under the document profile, I uh, will go over here, select web. And a size of 800 by 600 pixels is fine, even if that's not what your final video is going to be. And the reason we're choosing web is it's going to give us RGB colors to work with so that um, if you're in a flash class, you can switch over easily into the, the flash project. Obviously, if you're doing this for print work, then you probably want to just set up a regular RGB, or I, I'm sorry, a CMYK, just a regular print document. So you will want to start by grabbing the text tool or the type tool here and just click here in the toolbox and click somewhere on your artboard. And what I recommend you do is type in the entire alphabet. And then when you get that typed in, you can go back to this tool over here, the direct selection tool and grab this like you're going to move it but hold down the option key so that you make a copy and what we'll do is we'll move this off to the side so what I'm doing is I'm moving my my actual drawing board over here by holding down the space bar moving over and then we're gonna grab these two again I defaulted back to this tool and grabbing this moving them over here and then what I'm going to do is go back to the text tool, double click in here to select all of it. I'll go to type, I'll go to change case, and I'll change this to upper. Now what I'll do is I'll grab the whole entire thing, click and drag like I'm just going to move it, but I'll hold down the option key. And now I have a copy of all of that. And then what I'll do is uh, oh and you know what actually one more thing I'm gonna do to make this even easier so that we don't have to grab two pieces each time is I'm gonna link these together so I'm gonna double click to select all this I'm gonna do command X to get rid of it then I'm gonna go up here at the end of this one with the text tool hit the return key do command V and paste it and now I'll be able to with just one click well actually it'll take a swipe like that to select all of them. So I just took that text tool, click here, drag, and now I can go to the character and what I'll do is I'll start up near the top of the alphabet and I'll just start grabbing some of these and as soon as I get one I'll hold down the option key and drag again, make another copy, swipe across here, and the reason I'm doing it one at a time like this is it remembers where I left off in this menu in the alphabet. So I can then select another one and so on and so on. And maybe you just do this one time a year or every time you get new fonts and you have a document set up like this for when you need to experiment with fonts. Okay, so I'm going to just do this one more time. I think you get the idea. I'm going to grab a font that I've had success doing this in the past past with. It has some interesting serifs on it and that is uh, Palatino. Okay and so what you would do is and I'm just grabbing the the magnifying glass right here zoom tool and I'm and I'm just dragging a marquee across this area and that's what will zoom into the screen and I'm just looking through seeing what's an interesting letter form so I'm gonna grab the S here and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take the text tool and just drag across here do a command C for copy then I'm gonna double click on the hand tool to bring my original drawing window into view then I'm gonna go back to the text tool click I may still have a selection here, so I'll hold down the command key to give me the, the direct selection tool for a second. Click. Now click with the text tool. Yeah, that must have been what happened. Command V. Paste that in there. Going to swipe across it one more time to select it, and this time I'm going to make it actually quite a bit bigger. I'm going to try 200 points here. 
Okay, that's a pretty decent size to work with. All right, now, in addition to having these letter forms over here, whenever I'm actually getting ready to work on one, what I usually do is keep a backup copy over here and then hold down the option key, click and drag to make a copy of it. The reason that I do that is right now, if we click on either one of them, we get information about what typeface it is, what size it is. But as soon as I do the next step, create outlines with this, I no longer get it. Now, one thing that's important is you did see me just dial in right here 200 points, but sometimes people will scale their typefaces by taking the direct selection tool, going on the corner, holding down the shift key. Now that's fine as long as you hold down the shift key past the time that you release the mouse. If you accidentally release the shift key first, like I'm going to accidentally do right now, and then the mouse, you can accidentally stretch the letter forms, which is a, a major no-no in typography. So up until the point that you convert these to outlines, you can tell if you accidentally did this. Like, let's say I come back the next day and I'm looking at this and I say, ooh, that looks funny. Here's how you can tell if you did stretch a font. Go into the character panel. Now if you don't have that as an option here in your panels, you go to window, to type, and then to character. And if yours may open up like this, where you only have a couple options showing, but if you go to this little sub-menu and go to show options, you'll see more options here. And what you want to look at is right here the horizontal scale and the vertical scale and if they're not both at a hundred percent with this selected then you know that's exactly what you did was accidentally scale one so I'm gonna type a hundred back in here and then I'm just gonna type 200 back in here to keep it at the same size okay so let's go back to this now so this is the one that we're gonna experiment with what I need to do here is convert this into just a shape like any other shape because a lot of the things that I'm about to show you you can't do with regular text so I with it selected go up to type go to create outlines and now look at the difference when I click on this one I get this information about it being a typeface when I click on this one basic information like you would with any other shape so it is no longer an editable typeface now the whole point of this little exercise is that you can develop a logo that looks like it goes perfectly with the typefaces. And so I can tell you from experience that generally if you take too much of the letter form, you have to shrink it down too much and then it really doesn't look like it goes with the, the typeface anymore. So you're usually looking for a piece of the letter form, maybe half at most. So what we need to do is figure out what half we want to work with and we'll give that a shot so what I need is I want just about like this much I'll, I'll start with the, the bottom half of it so a very easy way to, to get rid of the chunk is just to go over here grab the eraser tool now this is housed with a couple other tools and just in case you see these instead of eraser tool you'll know where to find it you just click hold down grab the tool that you do want and what I'm going to do is to erase an entire section of the letter is I'm gonna hold down the option key. Option key is down, I click, I drag, and if I want just that piece right there, I could release it, but actually I think I wanna kinda of cut it at a diagonal here, so I'm gonna to have to do this in two steps. Okay, release the mouse, and so I'm just gonna swipe across here like that as well. Okay, so I'm going to try it with that piece right there, see what we get. Now hopefully you're thinking, boy, that, that looks pretty extreme right there, and we'll address ways of, of fixing that later, but right now we just want to experiment to see what we get from this. So um, here's the steps to do this. Number one, select the piece. Number two, go over here and grab the Rotate tool. Now the Rotate tool is also housed with other tools, so just in case you see the Reflect tool, you'll know to click down, grab the Rotate tool. Next step is to click where you want the center point to be. So I'm going to click right here, 
Next step is to grab this thing and now it'll start to move around that center point. So what you want to do so that you get even increments is hold down the shift key and with the shift key I can either move 45 degrees at a time or 90 degrees at a time. So I'm going to try 90 degrees at a time. I am going to also hold down the option key and watch what happens to the cursor. Get that doubled up cursor which lets you know you're going to make a copy. I will release the mouse first and then the two modifier keys, the shift and the, the option key. Now I can hit command D and that will duplicate the last step that I did. Do that one more time. So. I'm not overly happy with that one. It's kind of plain. Now, if I filled in the middle part here, it might look a little bit better, but I'm not overly happy about that one. So what I'm going to do is just copy this piece again. And just so I kind of know where I've been, I'll keep a copy of this over off to the side somewhere here. So now let's go back to this one, and I think, you know, major, uh, what, what, uh, not major, but, uh, you know, part of the problem is that it's a little bit too big. So let me try to chop a little bit more off. I'm going to go back to the eraser tool, hold down the option key, and let's try it about right there, see what happens. Now, again, that's still pretty extreme. In fact, let's just get rid of a little bit of that right now. Okay, let's go back to our steps here. Let's hold down the, or grab the, the rotate tool. I'm going to click right there. I'm clicking, dragging, holding down the um, shift key. Now it looks like 90 degrees, or 45 degrees will, will work as well. So that'll be eight times around. So I'm going to hold down the option key to get a copy. Release the mouse, release the option and the shift key, command D to rotate that around. Now if I filled in that little center hole, that could be pretty interesting. I actually like it better when the negative space doesn't feel so trapped, where you kind of have to use your imagination to see the, the places. So let's, let's try that one more time. This time I'm just going to move the, the center point away a little bit. And let me show you a little trick here, because you may be thinking, well, I don't remember where the center point was when I made that. Actually, let me grab the same starting point here. Okay, grabbing this piece, holding down the option key. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the rulers. So I'm going to go view rulers, show rulers. And then I'm going to drag out a guide. And I think last time I placed a cursor about right there. So this time I'm going to place it up a little bit higher. And let's drag out a vertical guide. So now if we redo this, we know where we placed the cursor. And we can adjust it accordingly. So I'm going to replace, repeat those steps, shift, option. No, and I can already see that's not quite far enough away. I'd get almost exactly what I had before. So I'll command Z, back up a step, and let's try placing this point up a little higher yet. And maybe just to remember that, I want to drag a guide out there. All right, so try this process again. Nope, still not quite enough yet. Try it up a little higher yet. Still not getting what I want. Okay, so this one may not work exactly like what I want to, to get that piece because it seems like if I have to go way up here to, to get it to, to go around but uh, to, to give me any kind of space in there, but that's obviously too far away. We're going to end up with a super huge gap in here. We could try going down to here with it and see what happens. Try that. Now that's, whoops, forgot to... Hold down the shift and the option key there. Okay, so that's better on the outside, but now the inside's too thick. So it seems like the solution is I need to, to grab a longer piece here and kind of think about what exactly I'm grabbing, like maybe cut it off about right there. So we'll continue this in the next movie.